Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Anita Ekberg was the statuesque former Miss Sweden who became a global film sensation after cavorting in Rome's Trevi Fountain for Federico Fellini's La Dolce Vita. Although demure and innocent by today's standards, the scene caused a scandal and made the 29-year-old Swede a household name. How Anita Ekberg has changed the history of cinema forever. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Some gossip columnists sniffily nicknamed her the Iceberg because of her Scandinavian roots, yet her dramatic décolletage, glowering good looks and vivacious delivery proved an enticing and popular combination with cinema audiences of the 1960s. Frank Tashlin, who directed her in the 1956 comedy Hollywood or Bust, the pun was intended, said that Eckberg's appeal lay in the immaturity of the American male, this breast fetish. There's nothing more hysterical to me than big-breasted women, like walking, leaning towers, he said. Eckberg was indeed a teetering tower. She was 170 centimetres tall and possessed a considerable bust, of which she once said, it's not cellular obesity, it's womanliness. Eckberg was one of the cinema's most famous sex goddesses, as renowned for her performances as she was for her alleged list of romances with major stars such as Frank Sinatra and Gary Cooper. Kirsten Anita Marianne Eckberg was born on September 29, 1931, in Malmö, Sweden. Her parents were Gustav Frederik Eckberg and Alva Maria Larsson. In her teens, Anita worked as a fashion model. Growing up with seven brothers and sisters was not an adventure, but Anita's adventure began when she was elected Miss Sweden in 1950. In 1951, she went to the US, despite speaking very little English, as she wanted to compete for the Miss Universe. She was one of the six finalists. She did earn a starlet's contract with Universal Studios, she auditioned for, but lost out on, the part of Honey Rider in the first James Bond film, Dr. No. Along with Marilyn Monroe, Eckberg was one of the most popular pin-ups of the 1950s. She quickly got a film contract with Howard Hughes's RKO that did not lead anywhere, but Anita herself has said that Hughes wanted to marry her. Instead, she started making movies with Universal, small roles that more often than not only required her to look beautiful. She appeared briefly in The Mississippi Gambler, Abbott and Costello Go to Mars, playing a woman on Venus, Take Me to Town and The Golden Blade. She also appeared on several Bob Hope TV specials, where her bombshell curves were fodder for Hope's jokes. The studio sent her to work in Italy, where she played Henry Fonda's unfaithful wife in King Vidor's War and Peace. Hollywood didn't know what to do with her. The next eight years were a whirlwind for Eckberg. As a starlet at Universal, she received lessons in drama, elocution, dancing, horseback riding and fencing. Through her contract with Universal, the Swedish actress was expected to take drama lessons, learn elocution and become a well-rounded member of the company's repertoire, but she admits that she mostly rode horses during her six months with the production company. She made a few on-screen appearances, but was dropped from her contract as quickly as the law would allow. The combination of Eckberg's voluptuous physique and colourful private life, such as her well-publicised romances with Hollywood's leading men like Tyrone Power, Yule Brenner, Rod Taylor and Errol Flynn, appealed to the gossip magazines, like Confidential, and she soon became a major 1950s pin-up, appearing in men's magazines like Playboy. Additionally, Eckberg participated in publicity stunts. She once admitted that an incident in which her dress burst open in the lobby of London's Barclay Hotel was prearranged with a photographer. Eckberg toured Greenland with Bob Hope, entertaining American servicemen. Hope spoke of her beauty and John Wayne signed her to a contract with his Bat Jack Productions at $75 a week. By the mid-1950s, after several modelling jobs, Eckberg finally broke into the film industry. Miss Sweden in the early 1950s and she shot to global fame after playing the capricious actress Sylvia 
opposite Marcello Mastriani in Federico Fellini's La Dolce Vita about decadent high society in Rome in 1960. It was in Rome that she met director Federico Fellini who cast her in La Dolce Vita, the most wonderful woman created since the beginning of time, an actress pursued by news photographers. She had the beauty of a young goddess, Fellini said, the luminous colour of her skin, her clear ice blue eyes, golden hair and exuberance. Joie de vivre made her into a grandiose creature, extraterrestrial and at the same time moving and irresistible. At the time, the two couldn't speak the same language, but she said that they got along marvellously. I didn't speak Italian and he didn't speak English at that time. We communicated by looking at each other. It was most amazing. Fellini and Eckberg were to become great friends, but she insisted that they were never, despite some speculation, lovers. He was the greatest film director of all time, but I would not have looked at him twice as a man, she declared. Yet Fellini's wife, Giulietta, believed that her husband and Eckberg were lovers. When he died, I called her to offer my condolences and clear the air. She believed me, and we were good friends afterwards. The scene of her wading into the late Baroque Trevi Fountain in a strapless velvet black dress, calling to Mastriani in English, Marcello, come here, hurry up, is one of the most famous in the history of cinema, and made her a sex symbol for a generation. The on-screen chemistry between Eckberg and Marcello Mastriani in La Dolce Vita is legendary. Whether the pair had a relationship or it was trumped up by gossip remains a mystery. The sight of the water caressing her impossibly voluptuous body was shocking for audiences in the 1950s. It's unquestionable that the pinnacle of Eckberg's career is La Dolce Vita, the film in which she plays the dream woman. Audiences specifically remember her for getting in the Trevi Fountain and cavorting with zero abandon. As sensual as the scene is, at the time of filming it was freezing. Eckberg said the weather was so dismal that she had to be lifted out of the fountain at the end of the shoot because she couldn't feel her legs. Hosting a Swedish radio show, Eckberg recalled shooting the Trevi Fountain scene in January when the water in the fountain was cold and Mastroianni was drunk on vodka. Her co-star, Marcello, found the scene even more difficult despite the luxury of a wetsuit under his clothes. He needed his acting resolve stiffened by an entire bottle of vodka, Fellini claimed. More than once he fell over drunk in the freezing water. I was freezing to death, Eckberg told Swedish TV. I thought that my legs were becoming icicles. The water in the fountain comes from the mountains and the film was made in January. I have seen that scene a few times, maybe too many times. I can't stand watching it any more, but it was beautiful at the time. However, after a week of getting wet in the fountain and drying her frocks in the sunlight, Eckberg gained his respect and even affection. She guest starred in the short-lived TV series Casablanca and Private Secretary. She had a small part in the film Blood Alley, starring John Wayne and Lauren Bacall. A former Miss Sweden, Eckberg snagged a Golden Globe for Most Promising Newcomer for one of her initial Hollywood forays, the 1955 thriller. It was her first real speaking role in a feature. She appeared alongside the Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis comedy act in Artists and Models, directed by Frank Tashlin for Paramount, playing Anita. Eckberg's greatest opportunity was when Paramount cast her in War and Peace, which was shot in Rome alongside Mel Ferrer and Audrey Hepburn, directed by King Vidor. For a time, she was even publicised as Paramount's Marilyn Monroe. Considering that La Dolce Vita gave rise to the term paparazzo, it was ironic that the movie resulted in Eckberg being hounded by the press herself. She was constantly in the headlines for her romances with Hollywood's leading men. But she also made the front pages when in 1960 she turned on photographer Felice Quinto with a bow and arrow. Quinto was amongst a pack of reporters who followed her from a nightclub to her villa in Rome. During the fracas she was photographed with her knee in one man's groin. The actress was furious, Quinto later reported. 
Hollywood was a melting pot where passions, debate and fiery personalities combine. Cinema is home to many a scandal, and it is often during the great industry gatherings that conflicts spark and opinions crystallise and scores are settled. Federico Fellini's classic depiction of decadent American starlets and persistent photographers changed cinema forever. Viewers were shocked by the sight of Eckbird's body on display as the cold water clung to her skin, showing off every curve of her body. Rather than celebrate her, the Vatican condemned the film for its visions of the female form, specifically Eckberg's breasts, but she skipped a beat and lashed out at the Catholic Church. The famously sharp-tongued actress was unrepentant. I'm very proud of my breasts, as every woman should be, she once said. Federico Fellini's La Dolce Vita, now considered a classic, won the Palme d'Or at Cannes in 1960, but the Catholic Church considered it as a mockery of Christ's second coming, branding it La Sconcia Vita, the repulsive life, for what was then deemed gratuitous decadence. The film was banned and censored in many countries. Despite its status as one of the most brilliant films in the history of cinema, the image of Anita Ekberg bathing in the Trevi Fountain tipped the Catholic Church into fury. The film was judged too vulgar, too decadent and void of any intellectual interest, sharing a similar fate to Michelangelo's Antonioni's jury prize winning La Ventura. Ekberg's romantic life was also dramatic. At 24 years old, she was the height of fame in Italy. Ekberg was courted by eccentric tycoon and filmmaker Howard Hughes, and subsequently married two actors from whom she later divorced. She married actor Anthony Steele in 1956 and the couple divorced after three years. The police were called in to control the crowds who were trying to get a glimpse of the couple, but the marriage was doomed by Steele's heavy drinking. Right from the start he'd go out somewhere and not come home till the next morning, Eckberg said. On the third night I came home to find him swinging from the lights like an ape, smashed out of his mind. Because he was jealous, he was always picking fights with any man who approached me, and the last time we met, he borrowed $100,000 from me, which he never paid back. After four years of her first divorce, she married actor Rick Van Nutter in 1963, and they divorced in 1975. Later in her life, she said that singer Sinatra had asked to marry her, and she had declined. She had no children. La Dolce Vita was the major peak in Eckberg's career, and the 60s were the final decade where she consistently found work. After becoming a permanent resident of Rome, she acted in a bevy of European films like Behind Closed Doors and The Mongols, but she was also frequently featured in films with members of the Rat Pack. She starred with Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin in Four for Texas, and in 1966 she appeared in the Jerry Lewis film way, way out. In the 1970s her career shifted downward as she took roles in European B-movies like Gold of the Amazon Women and Kill a Nun, while in the midst of a divorce from her second husband Rick Van Nutter. However, there was more to Eckberg than a glowing countenance, epic eyebrows and a curvaceous frame. She had a sharp tongue, often claiming, it was I who made Fellini, not the other way around. She also blasted the violence of modern cinema. It's vulgar, disgusting. Where is the elegance, the mystery, the romance? Her chic style inspired the fashion houses. Valentino based his 1995 spring collection on La Dolce Vita, casting Claudia Schiffer in her place, while Dolce and Gabbana cited her as the influence for their in-house magazine, Swide. She was chosen by Empire magazine as one of the hundred sexiest stars in film history in 1995. Though she made more than 50 films over five decades by the late 1970s, Eckberg's career had taken a dive, and she nearly stopped working. Her most recent role was playing a character named Ingrid in Italian TV series Il Bella della Donna, produced by Silvio Berlusconi's media set. Eckberg worked infrequently through the 80s and 90s, settling into some form of a normal off-screen life in Rome. According to Italian press reports, Eckberg died almost penniless. In December 2011, Italian newspapers reported that the then 80-year-old Eckberg was destitute 
after spending more than three months in a Rimini hospital with a broken thigh. During this time, her home had been robbed and also damaged in a fire, after which she had to move temporarily to a rest home. Ekberg then applied for financial help from the Fellini Foundation. Asked by the Irish examiner if she had received any aid through the organisation which promotes the filmmaker's legacy, she shakes her head, answering, No, I have not. Her fee as celebrity guest at the opening of this unique Fellini retrospective at Amsterdam's Eye Film Museum was not disclosed, but an employee calls it generous. Ekberg worked hard for that fee in Amsterdam, pushed in her wheelchair from floor to floor, overheard to ask plaintively, what do you want me to do now, from one TV interview to the next. I am the only one still left and the only one working, she jokes when asked about the divas of the screen of her day. There are no real actresses now to compare with my day, it is all completely different. Discos are showing movies, you watch them on the internet, it has all changed so much. Claiming never to have undergone plastic surgery, Ekberg believes women who do that are crazy. Forget about the surgeons lifting things, each age has its own charm. It's all about living life to the full. Age is a state of mind. Who is growing old? I am certainly not. My mind is as clear as when I was 20. Anita Ekberg died at age 83 from complications of an enduring illness on January 11, 2015, in Italy. Her body was cremated and her remains were buried at the cemetery of Scanner Church in Sweden. When interviewed in 2011 on her 80th birthday, she said, I have no regrets. I have loved, cried, been mad with happiness. I have won and I have lost. While we may have lost Ekberg, we have won an everlasting icon. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Anita Ekberg? The Swedish-born actress was a sex symbol of the 1960s.